Hey friends, as we continue on with this Joy of Surrender series for the month of December, I wanted you to hear from other women. I really want you to see their lives, hear their stories, and see what it looks like on the other side of obedience. How can giving God your yes actually bring joy and fulfillment? And what does that look like in day-to-day -day life, especially as a wife, as a mom, as a successful entrepreneur? So we are talking about all of those things this month on these conversations and interviews. And I'm so excited today to bring my good friend Heather Burns on as a guest. You are gonna love her joy, her energy, and all the wisdom that she shares. She's been such a support to me on my personal journey this year. And I wanted to remind you all that First of all, you need other women in your life to help you walk out the call and the purposes that God has for you. I have never known more than I ever have this year how much having like-minded believers and relationships around us help us on our personal relationship with the Lord and really help us be who we're supposed to be. So I really want to encourage you to find those people that you guys can connect with and support each other on your faith journey and do that. So let me introduce Heather to you really quick. Heather is a speaker, coach, and host of the Garden of Favor podcast. She's a mom of three, married to her best friend of eight years, and lives in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Heather is a multi-passionate entrepreneur whose greatest passion is pointing Christian entrepreneurs to Jesus. Can you see how we're friends? <laughs> Anyways, she's a certified Christian neuroscience life coach. She helps her clients stop fighting, flighting, and freezing their way to success by learning how to flow. It stands F-L-O-W. It stands for something that she offers. Check her out to get all the details on that. But um, really just helps you do deep mindset and heart set work. So that's a little bit about Heather. But let's get started today with this episode and let's tap into what's possible. Although I know living a surrendered life often goes against the grain of the rest of the world, there truly is glory revealed as we can bring heaven to earth through our surrendered lives. And one of the ways that you can remind yourself and stay encouraged on your journey of surrender is with the free Joy of Surrender printables. Feel free to go ahead, print those off. I know there's a few weeks till Christmas. You can cut them out and share them with others as you are starting to give out gifts and wrap those gifts for the holiday season and just enjoy. And then also there's those Joy of Surrender Christmas ornaments that are handmade by my son. If you wanna grab one, it is almost your last chance to do that. So do that quickly. And I'd love to help you decorate your Christmas tree in a very meaningful way this season. Welcome back to the Nourishing Mompreneur Podcast, where we get encouraged and empowered as we pursue our greatest potential within the walls of our home. Hey mama, my name is Michelle High, and I'm so thankful you're here. Do you feel like your life is good, but something in you feels unfulfilled? Do you feel stuck in the trenches of motherhood, exhausted and working so hard, but feeling like you're getting nowhere? Do you have big dreams you hold in your heart, but you've been living small? Are you motivated for more, but don't have the clarity or the courage to do anything about it? Do you want to discover God's best and see if it's really possible to be an excellent wife, an intentional mother, and be successful in business, all for the glory of God? As a wife of 16 years, a homeschooling mama of five, and an entrepreneur, I know exactly how you feel, every bit of it. I truly believe that the most important work you will ever do is within the walls of your home and that there is purpose in every season. If you are a fellow business-minded mama with a heart for home and a love for Jesus, let's process this journey and grow together. Hey friends, welcome to the Nourishing Mompreneur podcast. I'm so excited for our next guest in this Joy of Surrender series, Heather Burns. And I can confidently call her friend because she has been a true friend to me this past year. Uh, I think one of our first conversations was me sending you a voice message like while I was literally taking a shower or something like that. Um, it's cool. You know, I think I first connected with you on social media, but what's beautiful about podcasting is when you started your podcast and I really started to get to know you through the conversations on there, I just was so encouraged and I really felt like I was developing a relationship with you before you even knew me. And it just has been such a blessing. And I love that about podcasting is because as you grow, you get to process life with other people and bring others along in your journey. So 
as you're a couple steps ahead of me in different things, you get to carry me with you. And then as I grow, I can carry other women with me. And it's just this beautiful community process that we can just kind of learn and grow together and honor the Lord. So I have so much appreciated Heather and her friendship in my life this past year. One thing that has really united us is our journey of surrender. Um, It has been really special to have somebody that can walk alongside us through this process. And so all through the year, we, we talk, when we talk, we talk. <laughs> and then we'll, we won't talk for a while, but it's been neat to just have that relationship where it's like, hey, I'm not alone in this. And yeah, God's doing the same thing in me too. And yeah, we're in this together. So that's been our journey together this past year is just really growing together and kind of encouraging each other along the way with that like, hey, I'm there too. Yes, God's telling me the same things. And yes, let's keep going and pursuing him in this kind of way. So Heather, I just want to thank you for being so authentic. I want to thank you for your heart to serve and to love others. You really live out what you preach. And one of the things that I appreciate most about you is that you are passionate about the word of God and you're always pointing women to truth. And there is nothing more important than that. And so thank you for giving him your guest of obedience and for coming on the show today and giving us a little piece of your heart and your time. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Awesome. So I already gave you an intro, um, your little bio in the intro here, but do you have anything else that you'd love to share about you um, before we get started? Oh, I think... Well, I love that you said sharing the journey, right? It's, it's sometimes I think we're looking for this destination. And so uh, life is a journey and it's interesting. Even I, I actually despise writing bios. I'm like, Oh, what am I going to write? There's so much more to it. So I'm just excited to see what the Lord brings out in our conversation today. And equally, thank you for your kind words. You have been such a blessing to me. Uh, yeah, you popped into my inbox one day with like 10 voice messages and I'm like, who is this? Uh, but I, as I was listening, my spirit was just lifted and you are such an encourager and I am so grateful for our friendship. So I'm just excited to hang out with you today and talk about whatever the Lord has for us. Awesome. Well, the topic is surrender, which is something near and dear to your heart. I know. So I remember listening to your podcast last year and surrender was actually your word for the year. So I really want to hear just your surrender story, your surrender journey. I know that God put that on your heart, but how did it come into play? And what does that look like? What has this past year been like? And yeah, I just love to hear from you. Yeah. So In 2020, when I heard that my word was going to be surrender, I was not happy about it. I was like, no way, there's got to be something better. And I actually tried to negotiate with the Lord for a new word. And so my word for 2019 was bloom. I mean, that sounds awesome, right? It's like, oh, it's so, it even visually sounds beautiful. And to go from bloom to surrender didn't make sense to me. And so I thought there just can't be any way. And so tried to negotiate a new word and to hear from something else. And he kept pointing me back. No, it's, it's surrender. So really how it came about was in 2020, as everyone is aware of the world kind of just uh, a lot of our worlds were flipped upside down and I was seeking uh, peace and answers. And, uh, I think a lot of things that I had, I'd grown up in the church. I have known Jesus my whole life that by the grace of God, but I, I'm obviously on a continual journey to take a deeper understanding of who God is and what Jesus is. What really does that mean that what he's done for me? And so I have always had a relationship with him, but it continues to get stronger and stronger and deeper and deeper. And so all that to say, I was, I was, rocked. My world was rocked in 2020. Some of the foundational things that I had been told and taught my whole life, um, were being questioned. And so I was seeking, uh, answers. I was seeking control, really control of knowing the outcome, you know, God, is this the end? Like, is this the end times? Is this like, what's going on? Can I trust people is the, you know, with the government, just all sorts of things. I'm like, Oh gosh, my children, are they safe? Why did you let me have three kids when it's like, you know, and I'm like, okay, you're made for such a time as this. So I started seeking answers more than I started seeking Jesus. And the Lord showed me, Heather, there's, there's a difference between seeking answers from me and seeking me. And the the Bible says we're allowed to ask, you know, seek, like, seek, you can ask questions, right. But I was seeking understanding 
uh, out of a place of control. And so I wanted to understand revelations. I wanted to understand, like I got deep into eschatology because I had been taught one thing and then I started hearing other things and I'm like, oh, wait. So anyways, as I think those were some of the conversations we've had, I'm like, hey, uh, what do you believe about? You know, because I'm just not sure. And so when I, this was like 2019, 2020 into 2021. And so finally I came to a place where it was like, Heather, surrender the need to know. I am God. I am the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end. I have, I have you. I have, I have, I have good plans for you and surrender the need to know. Cause at first when I heard surrender, I was like, okay, what does that mean? That sounds like a punishment. Right. And so as he gave me definition of that in the beginning of 2021, I want you to surrender the need to know, give me your yes today and trust that I will take you to the next step. And so the Lord continues to speak this message to me about steps versus step right? Plural versus singular. And it's like the Lord's going to, he's already prepared our steps. The Bible tells us that, right? And so our job isn't to know all the steps. Our job is to know the next step. So for me, this year has really been about, do you trust me? Like you say you do, right? Do you know that I love you? You say that you do, but are your actions reflecting uh, what your, what your words are saying? And so it's kind of that, what we say versus what we do. And so that's been really my surrender personally is to surrender the need to know, trust him with today, give him my yes today and know that I, my job isn't to do God's job or to know the whole plan. My job is to listen and be obedient, seek him and take the next step, trusting that he's going to guide me and hold my hand along the way. That's amazing. I love that. That's so good. I think surrender and trust are so much connected, just like you said. Um, cool question for you, giving God your yes every day, giving God your yes this year. How has that impacted the course of your life? What does that look like for you? Have you had to lay some specific things down or maybe even like, what does it felt like? What does it felt like to walk and tread this path of surrender that God has called you to so clearly this year? It's yeah, that's a good question because I feel like it depends on what it is. I think there's a part of it. There's so much freedom because I'm like, well, I don't, I don't have to worry about it. Like, it's not my job. Heather, like lay that down. It's not your job to know every single thing. Your job is to trust that God has it at the same time. Uh, as I did feel him starting to shift my heart and shift my focus and shift my goals. It was a, uh, wait a second. <laughs> what are you doing here? Like, Oh, so I, um, have, you know, been a very ambitious entrepreneur. And, uh, with that, the Lord is just continually showing me that, you know, in 2018, he showed me that my business was an idol. And while he was blessing us through it, that my business was an idol. It was the thing that was defining my, my value, my success, my just everything. And even my, my worthiness of God, right? I was even attaching my success of my business to, oh yeah, God's blessing me. Yes, I'm a good girl. And it's really underlying. It's like this workspace thing. And so anyways, all that to say is he's continued to kind of stretch me and like, yes, I created you to be ambitious and to be a go-getter. And uh, I know that just faith, like faith is one of my spiritual gifts that I'm going to, I, we can do this God, right? Um, he has continued to show me that it's so much less about me and so much more about him. And so I went from working seven days a week in my latter uh, entrepreneurial career to recognizing, oh my goodness, I'm not giving him a Sabbath and, and giving my, and really the Sabbath is for us. It's not for God, it's for us. Uh, and so I implemented that. And then I would slowly be like, okay, I'm going to take off all weekend. I'm like, Ooh, this feels very weird to so anyways, for, fast forward to like 2020, I was working four days a week. Um, and then in 2021, it was working out that the Lord was calling me to even, even less work. And that felt very uncomfortable for me because I, in, in a season of our life, I was the, you know, God is my provider, but for understanding, right. I was, my husband was home. We retired him from the corporate world and my business was the one supplying all everything for us. And so when that transitioned last year, my husband went back to work, the Lord started shifting my heart to be more intentional with my children, more intentional with the home, more intentional with cooking and cleaning and doing 
more traditional motherly, you know, wifely type duties. And uh, my husband is, well, he was the one doing so much of that stuff. So anyways, I, in, in the very early on of our relationship, I was like, listen, I am not your traditional, like, you know, Betty Crocker. I don't like to cook. I don't really like to clean or do any of that stuff. I'll do it. But like, I'm not, I wasn't my mom. Like my mom was the stay at home mom. My mom loved to cook. My mom's a great cook. Um, and I didn't want that life. I didn't, I didn't want that. I was very career focused and then ended up having three kids. And so all that to say, the Lord started to really shift my heart to focus more on the home. And so to now where I'm working two days a week, which feels like, nothing to me. Right. And it's, um, it's just, it's fun. Like I love what I get to do. I am so humbled that the Lord gets that is using me in the capacity that is using me. And I really would like to work more at the same time. I know that the Lord is, is asking me to surrender my idea of success my idea of provision, my idea of what it looks like to be this successful entrepreneur um, and really take care of some of the foundational things in my life and in our family. And, and so I, uh, yeah, so I don't know, did I, did I answer your question? Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. So really like as you've walked in surrender this year, it's definitely rearranged your calendar. It's rearranged very much. your weekly schedule, your groove. It's cost you time. There's been a transition of of priority with what you do with your time. And you did mention because it's true and we got to bring it up that like it surrender is uncomfortable Mm -hmm. because often the Lord, you're you're making him greater in your life and you're making yourself less and you're surrendering your ability to be in control of everything, to call the shots, to trusting it, that it's going to be his way and his time. And so there's an uncomfortableness with that. And I want you to know if you're experiencing that, like it's normal. It doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. It's normal, but there is joy to be found on the other side of that because he is worth it. He is worth it all. And his strategy, his plans, his purposes are higher than ours. And so it's okay to feel uncomfortable. And I think that as you continue, there are different layers and levels of surrender. Um, Because for me, I'm like, man, this, this just keeps going. God, like you really want all of me. Like we're just going after all the hidden places. (laughs) There's so we're going going here next. Come on. I'm like, I can't wait. I'm like December 31st. Yes, Lord. What's my new word? Cause I'm ready to get out of this surrender season. No, no, really there is joy in it. And I, I will say, even though, you know, it's really flesh versus spirit, right? It's our flesh and what we want. And denying that to say, but my, but the spirit of the Lord is guiding me and te- in wanting to show me something different, wanting to surrender what I think is best for me and what I think is the plan and what I think or what I want to versus what the Lord wants. And so, yeah, it's, it is uncomfortable because logically we can try to make sense of what our flesh wants. Uh, and like, it doesn't make sense that you're asking me to do this. What? Like, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm just always in awe of how he does, like you said, bring joy through it and does more than we could ever imagine. And so I always say like, you know, it's our job to bring our natural and trust that God's going to put his super on it. And sometimes our natural is actually doing less. And in the world that we live in, the, 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 the verbiage is do more to get more, like do more to get more. You got to work harder, you know, the hustle and the grind and, uh, you know, just to keep up with all the things, whether it's a social media trend or, you know, what, what to get, but God's like, I, you don't have to follow that, right? You can surrender even your thoughts and your ideas to take on my thoughts and my ideas. And so it's a constant, like you said, there's so many layers to this word and I am really looking forward to 2022. (laughs) I know. Well, let me tell you something. Let me break it to you, sister. (laughs) So, you know, this year, my word was different. It was mission, but the Lord has clarified that all along the way, but it it basically could be surrender because it's the same thing, what the Lord has been doing. But anyhow, um, I kept thinking, I'm like, all right, God, at the beginning of the year, I was like, God, this is your year. I commit this year to you. It's your year, your way. And he's been taking full advantage. (laughs) No, thankfully, praise God. But all that to say is that what I'm understanding is that he is teaching me a new way of living. He is t- taking me, a Martha-wired woman, and teaching me to 
sit at his feet and mm-hmm. posture my heart in that way. And from that place, get up and do the work. He is disciplining me because surrender is not a season. Surrender is, it is the call of the gospel. We are called to mm-hmm. lay down our lives and take up our cross and lay down our lives for him. He gave us everything. And do we want to give him our all? That's the question. And so for me, I'm like, wow, this actually isn't a, a word for the year or a specific season. This is actually a new way of living that is honoring to you and that I believe is your design for the times that we're living in even. So that's my thought on that. So I know the Lord is going to give you fresh vision for 2022, but you're going to be surrendering. I guarantee guarantee that's going to be the foundation he's building. He's building upon your surrender. And I think the initial uh, discipline of transitioning to a real surrendered heart and lifestyle it, it, it's challenging. It's challenging. But I, I just wonder if the more you give God your yes, the more joy comes, the more ease comes because mm-hmm. it becomes part of who you are and how you respond to situations because you know immediately it's like, all right, God, I surrender the outcome. You, you got this, you're in control and you don't have to wrestle with this like my will versus your will every time. So I just know that God is working all these things out and I believe it's just there's going to be a Lord willing, you know, just more surrender, surrender groove as you continue. But tell, talk a little bit more about joy. How have you experienced joy in the midst of a, a different year, an uncomfortable year, a, a surrender year? Yeah. Yeah. When you're talking, I'm like, yes, jo- uh, surrender, it's a lifestyle, right? It is, it is the Christian walk. And so, yeah, the joy, well, I'll give you a really just like a, an example of that. I, again, before George and I got married, I was very open about, I don't love to cook. I, I don't, I'm not a good cook. I don't like to cook, you know, all those things that I would say often. And so I am a mindset coach and a heart set coach. And as the Lord started positioning my heart to focus more on the family, I'm like, Oh, I don't like that stuff. I don't even want to do that. And so at one point, you know, he had uh, asked me to be faithful with the little. So actually we sold our house last year and uh, because the housing market is very interesting, it was a seller's market, but not a buyer's. And so we sold our home and it was such a blessing to us, but we ended up signing a six month lease in a condo. And uh, with the anticipation that we'd find something pretty quickly. Well, that was a year ago. We're still in the condo. Uh, but anyways, even in this, in that year, the Lord was like, um, I, I want you to be stewarding your own house. So we had a cleaning lady in our home and she actually was coming to the condo and cleaning, cleaning our condo. And, uh, I just knew he was asking me to, to let her go and to clean my own house. Right. And so, uh, I've, I've even found joy in, so Mondays are our cleaning day and I have our two littlest at, at home. Still our oldest is in school. And, uh, I homeschool too. That's a whole other story, but that was last year. Um, and so, um, all that to say that Mondays are our cleaning day. And like my kids, we do this thing called, uh, I don't know. They just, they think it's like this challenge. And so i as I'm vacuuming, I'm trying to like get them to move to different parts of the house. So I give them these little challenges to like go to the couch or, you know, and I, I make it really fun for them. And so it's been joyful just to be able to play with them as I'm cleaning. And so they think cleaning is fun because mom's going to do this challenge, um, stuff like that, or, or cooking, right? I used to really say, I, I hate to cook right? Our words have power, right? The Bible tells us that our words have power to speak life or death. And so I was speaking death over, uh, 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 really, I was looking at cooking as like a burden and boring and not fun, where it's a blessing to be able, I have three children and a husband who loves me to be able to cook for. And so it's really just this mindset, mindset shift and perspective that the Lord has been allowing me to see joy in the midst of some of the things that could look as mundane or could look at as not fun or boring, or I have to do this, right? Instead of, no, I get, I get to cook for my children. I get to be home with my two. I don't, I don't have to go to a, an eight to four or a nine to five. And, um, and so cooking is another thing that Lord has just really allowed me to I start having fun with pinning stuff on Pinterest and trying out recipes. And last night, I will just tell you, my kids actually had a a meeting at church. Um, And so I cooked dinner and I went to the meeting and I, you know, came home and my husband was like, they ate it and they loved it. And so I'm like, yes. Um, So just little stuff like that, that 
again, as a very entrepreneurial minded person who have built a, a number of different businesses in a number of different industries, that was my marker of success. And where really joy is, is what we're seeking when we, th- I think, you know, we think whether it's a, a financial goal or a, or a weight loss goal or whatever, and all those things are okay, right? There's nothing wrong with those things, but really in the, in the ups and the downs of life and business, if we can find that constant, right, that joy in the midst of the mundane or the midst of things that, again, the world, hello, 2020, 2021, there's a lot of questions a lot of us have. What's going on? God, what are you doing? But finding joy in the middle of that, in in the surrender, in the not knowing exactly what is going on and what is God up to and trusting that we can still be joyful um, and we know this isn't our home and this isn't, this isn't the end all be all, but yeah, there's so much joy in the things that I never saw joy in. Yeah. That's amazing. And that's where he's transforming you in new ways. Mm -hmm. He's, he's at work. He's at work in all of it. So that's so encouraging. Okay. One last question for you before we go, I just wanted to ask you, to share maybe what does surrender look like to you in your everyday life, you know, as a wife, as a mom, as a business owner, because I think the idea of surrender, it may sound nice or we have all this talk, but it can seem a little bit vague, like, okay, that's cool. I really do want to know God more. I really do want to give God my yes. I really do want to surrender, but, but how, how do I surrender more? What does that look like in a normal, typical everyday life? As I seek to do all the things, what, what would be your advice for that? Yeah, for me, it, it starts off with quiet time with the Lord, that intimate, because I, I don't know what he has for the day. And so really just declaring that and, and speaking that Lord, I don't know what today looks like, but I want you in it. I, I want to do today with you. I, like I surrender my ideas of what's good. And I, while I might have an agenda, Lord, I give you permission. I give you permission to, 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 do whatever you want to do and guide me. And so, you know, I think there's that just the initial surrendering the idea of what I think the day should look like, or whether it's a, a, it's something with business or something with my kiddos or whatever. And uh, so I think that is my initial way to just set the tone of the day. Um, and I have to remind myself that throughout the day, right? Cause it's easy for our emotions to, well, I didn't, you know, get frustrated or, or, or sad or angry or whatever, because it didn't go the way that I expected. So I used to be a major anticipator and I would play things out in my head a lot. And if it didn't go the way that I planned, I'd be really upset. There's yeah. I just remember this one. My mom always brings this up. She's like, do you remember that one time when it was going on a date and this guy's, you know, we were going on a double date and he said we were going to go to like a Chinese restaurant and I love Chinese food. And on like the way there, they ended up changing their mind and saying that we were going to go to Mexican. Let me tell you what, I was not happy. Like I was just not, because I had anticipated in my head and my taste buds, I was already ready for Chinese. I was getting orange chicken. I was, you know, I was getting fried rice um, and it didn't go as planned and it literally ruined the night and that relationship didn't last. Uh, But little stuff like that, like Really, that we can't be surrendered to God's plan, whatever that is, you know? And so um, I think we are humans. We have to know that our feelings are okay. Like when you feel angry or sad or upset, right? Jesus had a lot of feelings. It's what are those feelings telling you? And so as those feelings come up throughout the day, I'm human. I'm, if my kids are fighting, I'm going to feel a certain way, right? Or if they're not obeying or, and so it's acknowledging those feelings and surrendering those thoughts and those feelings to the Lord and repositioning my heart, repositioning my mind to be more in alignment with his. And so for me, that's like fruit. I really just all throughout the day, like fruit of the spirit. Well, let me have more of that, right? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. And so to me, it is a constant. And for me, it's knowing when those feelings start to bubble up, whether it's disappointment or anger or sadness or whatever it may be that I take I'm aware, like I'm very aware that those feelings are telling me something. And sometimes I've got to surrender those 
and really those feelings are telling me that I have a thought about something and surrendering that thought like that's not true. It's just like a taking the thought, the, our thoughts captive. And so, uh, as I have journeyed in that, just in my own, like in my business, right. I'm a mindset coach. And so, um, he is constantly teaching me also like how to do that. And so surrender the feelings, surrender the thoughts, uh, to him to be, again, get back in alignment with who he's, who, who he is and who he says that I am and what he's asking me to do. That's amazing. I love that advice. So good. So, so good. Okay. Before we go, do you have any final thoughts for the woman listening right now? You know, it's Christmas time. She's in the midst of crazy schedules and calendars and activities, but she's also thinking ahead for the new year. She's got dreams in her heart. She wants deep down to be a wonderful wife. She wants to be an excellent, intentional mother. And she has dreams for business. She has goals, but do you have any advice? What would you say to her as she just postures her heart to start up the new year in a way that's going to honor the Lord? Yes. Yes, I do. So last year, the Lord had encouraged me to take off social media for the entire month of December, to unplug, to just drown out the noise. And so there's this constant FOMO. And so I'm sure you have heard of JOMO, which is the joy of missing out. And so as I was preparing for the month of December, and of course, you know, as a businesswoman, I'm like, all right, how am I going to end the year strong? And I remember this last year thinking, all right, I'm going to end Q4. And the Lord was like, I got this. I want you to take a break. I'm like, what? How do I take a break? And so as I was preparing for this year and kind of planning, you know, all the things, right, I felt like the Lord was like, take the month of December off again. And so from a person who's building a business online, that's like, that's everything, right. So to be able to promote and all the things. And so, um, I have started to implement the Jomo challenge. And so I encourage you, if you're listening, there is so much joy in missing out on the noise and what the world has to offer you and everything that, the enemy wants you to think that you need or that you want or that you're missing out on. And that Jesus really is the answer to freedom. He's the answer to provision. He's the answer to joy. He's the answer to anything that you're missing in your life, any hole in your heart. Jesus is the answer. And there is so much joy in missing out with trying to fill anything in you with anything other than Jesus. So we're doing this podcast episode today, you know, and we're recording it so that I can really have like this month off and surrender my heart, surrender my mind, uh, to all the things that I would think that I want and to miss out on everything and the noise so that I can have Jomo. So I just encourage you, like, it doesn't make logical sense that a businesswoman would take off the month of December. And I mean, literally that could be the biggest month that I could sell people on. Oh, I'm going to help you. And, you know, come in January, but I know that God's asked me to do this so much that this is going to be in my annual business plan that I, I take off the month of December every, unless he changes it. But, um, I'm so excited to see what joy he gives me in December missing out on all the noise. I love that. That is such great advice. I really encourage you guys Take her advice. It's so good. I did my Jomo month. I've actually done it quite a bit this year. Social media and I have not been friends. <laughs> it just hasn't been the, the thing for me this year, which has been different, different because you know, when you're building online businesses, you're online. But for me, it was January. I had to get things to a place where I could unplug for the month of January. And it was really set the course for me to allow really strong boundaries for this past year because it breaks that addiction. It breaks that habit to kind of go to your phone all the time. And it really just cuts out a lot of the noise, a lot of the distractions, and a lot of the things that you may not realize are taking your joy and your energy away from the things that are most important. And you'll be more present in the process. So I just want to encourage you. That is awesome advice. Um, I just want to read one verse in closing. It's just been on my heart as we've been talking, because as you hear, Heather, if you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to see she's just beautiful inside and out. And she really does live out joy. We're not just talking the talk, you know, she's walking the walk. And so, um, Psalm 16, 11 says in your presence, there is fullness of joy at your right hand, are pleasures forevermore. And one thing that Heather said was surrender the need to know. And I just want to encourage you as we close, just to remember that you don't need to know everything. You need to know him. 
You need to know mm-hmm. him and you need to spend time in his presence because in his presence, in his presence, there is fullness of joy. And so he is the, the root. He is the source. He is, he is the source of your strength, your satisfaction, and all that you need in him today and every day. So cling to him tightly this season and really seek his heart, the heart of the father. And I just know it's going to be a beautiful journey that the Lord has you on. So Heather, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for your words of wisdom, for pouring out all this goodness on the podcast today, but tell us where can the listeners find you? What do you have in the works? Just let us know. Yes. Well, it's been so fun. And again, thank you for allowing me to to hang out with you. So yes, you can find me. I have my own podcast. It's called the Garden of Favor podcast. You can find me there. I've got a Facebook group. It's um, Biblical Principles and Brain Science for Christian Entrepreneurs. You can find me on social media, Heather Shriver Burns uh, in on Instagram and Facebook. Those are really the only two platforms I'm on for now, at least. I don't know what, what's going to come in 2022, but um, Heather Shriver Burns is under construction but by the grace of God, uh, it's going to be up in 2022. So yeah, you can connect with me, any, any of those places. And I would love to hear from here, hear from anyone and connect. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right, guys, you guys have an awesome day. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Hey, you like mama. So please leave a review. Hey mama, real quick before you run off and do all the things, If you found value in today's conversation, it would mean the world to me if you left a review and subscribed to my podcast. I know you know how precious time is. The biggest thank you you can give me for taking the time to share on this podcast is to leave a written review. This helps me on my mission to encourage and empower others who are pursuing their greatest potential from home. So head over to iTunes, scroll down to the bottom of the Nourishing Mompreneur podcast to rate and leave a super quick review to let me know what spoke to your heart. And if you're feeling a little extra today, take a screenshot of today's episode and tag me on social. I value your time so much and appreciate you connecting with me. Find me at nourishingmichelle.com forward slash connect.